All right, so we're making some good progress with this form and we've seen a handful of different useful Alpine directives we can use along the way. In this lesson, I'd like to handle what happens when a user submits the form. And for this project, I'd like to do a couple of different things. First, I'd like to take those input values and make sure they pass some simple validation rules. If they do, great. If not, then I'd like to generate some errors specific to each input field and store them in a property on our data object. Later on, probably in the next lesson, we can then show those errors to the user on the form itself. Second, if the validation passes, then I want to reset the form so that all fields become empty again, and maybe just log some kind of success message to the console so we know it's worked. So they're the two things we need to do thing. We need to validate the imports and store any errors, and then we need to reset the form once the validation passes. So let's start with the validation side of things. I'm going to come to the data object and I want to make a new function called validate form. You can call it whatever you want. And it's inside this function, we're going to validate each individual field. I'm also going to come up here and I want to make an errors property and set it equal to be an empty object to begin with. And it's on this errors object that we'll be attaching error properties from within the validate function later on if certain input values aren't valid. All right. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do inside this validate function is just reset any previous errors from any previous submissions so that each time we submit the form, we're starting with a blank slate and we're assuming no errors yet. And to do that, we can just say this dot errors is equal to an empty object again. The next thing I want to do is individually check each property or input field. And remember, all of those properties are stored up here, which we can easily access. So I will do an if check to say if this dot username dot length is less than three, then do something. And if the username value is less than three characters long, then we're going to add an error property to the errors object because we want the username to be at least three characters long. So we can say this dot errors and then tack on a new property called username. And we call it username because that's the import field that we're validating right here, right? And we're going to set that equal to an error message, something like username must be at least three characters. And that's all we have to do for the username field. And then we need to repeat this kind of logic now for the rest of the input values. So what I'm going to do is actually just paste these in these other checks because it saves a lot of time. I'm sure you don't want to watch me write all these out from scratch, but all I do is check each input field the same way by saying if, and then some kind of condition, for example, this one is this.password.length is less than six, then we add an error to the password property on the errors object this time. And we say the password must be at least six characters. And then the next one is if this dot password is not equal to this dot password confirm. So if you're confirming a password, then they have to match, right? So if they don't, then we add an error and we say this dot errors dot password confirm is equal to passwords do not match. So we've made a third property on this errors object right here. Then if we don't have a belt color selected by saying if not this dot belt, then we create a belt property on the errors object and we say, please select a belt color. And then finally for the bio, if the length is less than 10, then we add a bio property on the errors object and it says bio must be at least 10 characters. So now we're doing some very simple validation on all of these different input fields right here. Okay, so now we've got the validate function sorted, we can come to the submit form function, which gets fired when a user submits the form. And we can invoke the validate function by saying this dot validate form followed by some parentheses. Now, once we do this, one of two things is going to happen. Either we'll attach errors to the error object if some input values fail the validation, or we'll end up with an empty errors object if all the input values pass the validation. So let's just log the errors property to the console right here so we can see that later on and we'll see what those errors are. All right, so I've got the console open and we're not going to fill anything in. We're just going to try to submit the form and we should see all of these errors right here. If we open this up, we can see we've got an error for the belt, the bio, the password and the username. We don't have one for confirm password because, well, they are the same, even though they're blank, they're still the same. So let us now try filling some of these in. I'm going to say Mario and then we'll say test one, two. And then down here, we'll say test one, three. Instead, we'll select a belt color. In fact, we won't and we'll do a bio. We'll just say, hi, my name is Mario. All right. So if I submit, we should get two errors now, right? 
the confirmed password one because they're different and also still the belt color. Let's submit and now we can see down here we just get two errors, the belt and the password confirm. All right, so this is our work and each time we submit the form, we're resetting the errors back to that blank object. So we're getting rid of all the previous errors and we're just adding the ones that are relevant for this submission. So let's delete this and go to test one, two instead. We'll select belt. I'm going to clear this over here, then submit. And now you can see the errors object is absolutely blank. There's no errors whatsoever. So that's all working. Right then, so that's the first step out of the way. We performed some basic validation and generated some errors based on that validation, which we can use later. The next thing I want to do is conditionally reset the whole form so that all the input fields become blank again. But I only want to do this if there's no errors. So in other words, if we have no keys present in the errors object, right? So we can easily check this by saying if, and then inside parentheses, we will say object, and then use the keys method to get all the keys from a given object. In our case, we want all the keys from the errors property. So we can pass this dot errors into this. So this returns an array of keys from this object. And we only want to reset the form if the length of that array of keys is zero, because that means there's no error keys in the object or the array right here is empty. So we'll tack on the length property and we'll see if that is equal to zero. And then if it is, we can do something. So the first thing I will do is take the console log where we log out all the properties and I'm gonna move that to inside the if block so that we're only doing this if the form passes validation and we have no errors. Next, I wanna reset the form and there's a couple of different ways we could do that. The first way would be to manually take each property in this data object like the username and the password and we would reset all of them just to their original values like empty strings, all right? And because we have model binding set up, that means that when the property values change to be an empty string, the values in the input fields update to match. So they become empty as well. And it essentially just resets the form. But there is an easier way to do this using a special event object that Alpine gives to us inside any event handler function, like this submit one right here, this submit form one. So to accept that argument, we just have to use the value dollar sign events. And this gives us information about the event, including the tag element of the event. Now the event in question in this case is the submit event. And we know that the tag of that submit event is the form itself. So in here, we could say dollar sign event dot target to get a reference to that DOM element, the form element. And then on that form element, we can use a method called reset to reset the whole form. And this method isn't anything to do with Alpine. It's just a standard method we can use in JavaScript on forms to clear them. And this is much easier than manually resetting all the fields individually. All right, so let's try this out. I'm gonna type in a username Mario and then a password test one, two, three. And then down here we'll do test one, two, just because I want to see an error first of all to make sure that it doesn't reset the form if we have an error in the errors object. Belt color, black, and then hello, my name is Mario. Okay, let's submit the form. And we get an error, and it's not cleared the form because we have that error object right here with a key in it, password confirm. So let's update this to add on the three, and now they should match, I think it was Test one, two, three, yes it was. Let's submit the form now and hopefully, oh, it says passwords do not match still. All right, let me just delete this and do it again. I'll just do test one, two. Is that what I've done? Yep, and then test one, two. All right, let's see if this works. Submit, and yep, now they match and it's reset the whole form. It's cleared them, awesome.